early on when the banking crisis hit a, a couple months ago, we saw a big pop in Bitcoin. The one thing right. I would just point out is that recently, as, as early as last week, I believe it was, um, we saw a couple banks down close to 50%. The banking sector was looking in trouble. Again, there were rumors about even more bankruptcies and, and uh, Bitcoin actually fell that day. And so what that told me was, is that while Bitcoin at some point becomes that sort of safety, that hedge, it is still a risk asset and people have to be careful of that. If the markets do start to dump out, I still think Bitcoin does head lower and potentially much lower. Yeah, so so the 30,500 level was just an absolutely impressive technical range on Bitcoin. And the reason why, again, that was such a wall and price had so much trouble getting through it is if you go back to 2021, just before the big run up to 65,000, you could see that low right there. Yeah. Then we go right over here, that mid-cycle bull market cycle low was right there and then right over here. So it made sense that Bitcoin again could go up into that level and then was rejected. Now, for me, I'm watching this 27,000 level super closely. Uh, right now, we're just above it at 27,700 or so. If that breaks, that kicks off another round of selling that probably takes us to 24 to 25,000. I, I continue to be overall still thinking this is a bear market in crypto, that this is a bull mar a bear market rally. The thinking there is not only technical, meaning we haven't got through this 30,500 level, but it's also a concern based on what we're seeing in Pepe and based on some of these other speculative crypto assets. And again, when you see that type of speculation, that's not the bottom yeah. of a market, that's the top mm -hmm. of a market. And that's yeah. that to me is a big issue that I hope I hope investors really do recognize. I think off of these levels, I'm still on a bearish position. And again, you know, if we were to establish ourselves over that 30,500 level, I think things could change just a little bit in terms of the Bitcoin market maybe being in their bottom phase or having a bottom. But right, right. now, I, I'm honestly, my biggest fear on in the crypto market is twofold. One, it's it's that you don't have regulation yet and the and the government is is very they're they're purposely delaying regulation to bring out the CBDC first, right? So it's it's yeah. the China playbook. And I know it's kind of crazy we're following China, but China outlawed Bitcoin, then they brought forth the digital yuan and now they're letting Bitcoin kind of come back again. Yeah. The US government didn't take that that that's case, but what they're doing is they're not giving any clarity in regulation. They're saying, Oh, it's a security, it's not, it's, it's this and that to the point where Coinbase has had to say, We're gonna sue the SEC to figure out what the heck is is what's going on here. And what that does is it leaves, it, it keeps big money out of crypto right now, right? I mean, you don't have hedge funds, you don't have a lot of these bigger players feeling comfortable to invest in it until the government unveils their CBDC. And then I'm sure it'll coincide with some regulatory stuff. So for me, that's a that's a risk. And also I look at the stock market and I see everywhere signs of, of complacency, uh, the VIX being where it is, the pattern formation is, is a replica of the psychology of the market chart where just before it has a major major, major collapse. And so if the markets, if the equity markets are going to drop big 20, 30%, I have yeah. a hard time believing Bitcoin is going to hold up in that situation. I mean, there's there's definitely the, the more uncertainty in the market, the more it's going to create hardships for price to continue up. And I think that's the biggest thing with Bitcoin and for the rest of the crypto markets. And by the way, I mean, I know you said we're going to get to gas fees, but I'm having a hard time figuring out how Ethereum has a major future when the gas fees are as high as they are. That's, that's a big concern of mine. Um, I would, I've been yeah. a big fan of Ethereum, but that needs to be figured out. And again, we can get to that in a little bit. But going back to Binance, yeah, I mean, another issue out there that is going to make investors a little bit more hesitant with putting money into cryptocurrencies. And, and you just have to be careful in this Small scenario. Ebook. So big in impact. terms of the, the chart tree. itself, the only I don't know, four I'll bring ways up that my chart here so we can take a look. Forever. We're basically Download seeing ETH. We had free. that kind of blow off top right at the highs that took us to just over 2100. And now we're kind of stuck in this range. And again, you know, you do have a level underneath here, this upslope sloping trend line in this flat area around 1825 or so on a technical yeah. basis that is what you want to see ETH hold if it breaks that you head to 1700 that breaks you're heading down to the 1500s but right now again you know you're in this sideways consolidation ETH to me looks like it's struggling a couple things that I didn't like about the price action here when you popped up you had a few sideways days and then it reversed 100% mm -hmm. of the move here was a nice green day resistance and it reversed that move right away so it seems like right now when ETH is popping it's it's getting slammed down very, very hard, which means big money is looking to unload in this range, at least for now. So I'd just be a little bit careful. I mean, those things are just standing out to me in terms of the price action. It's something for everyone to kind of pay attention to. I continue to be a huge bull on gold. Silver, silver I am as well, but a longer term horizon because of the industrial side of it. And if we do slip into a recession, like I do expect in the second half of the year, then silver may struggle a little bit compared to gold. Yeah. But gold to me just continues to be the no brainer you know
know, if, if panic is in the markets, gold is the place to go. If inflation stays high because jobs are doing well and everything like that, gold likely does well with inflation high as well. So, so to me, it just continues to go higher. I have an end of year price target of 2300 and I, I do think it is achievable uh, very easily by year end. Here we are at all time highs or basically just under all time highs. It's been a remarkable run on gold. I still remember in 2021, the Bitcoiners just trouncing gold, saying it was dead. Yeah, so for me, it's it's the gold usually bought through the ETF, like the GLD or something. That to me is more kind of the the base of my portfolio, where it's it's not going to get too crazy. I'm not going to lose a lot. I'm, I'm not going to make 100% on it, obviously, in a right. very short amount of time. The miners are much more the volatile players, right? They suffered in 2022 because inflation was high and gold's price was not keeping up with that. So as they're mining, they're not their 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 input costs were up high and gold was not able to be sold it at a higher level as well. Now it's reversing. Now inflation is coming down and the miners so in, the miners costs are coming down and gold is actually starting to take off. So I think if you're if you're aggressive, the miners are the place to be. If you're more conservative, then obviously stick with the metal itself. Um, I do think this situation and again it seems as politics become crazier and crazier, the risks of some hard nosed uh, in, or, or hard headed politicians does increase the risk of a default, but I still think something gets done because no one wants to be viewed as the person right. that stood behind the, the default in the U.S. But for me, it's more looking out and saying, okay, well, what are the risks now? The Fed may be pausing. Right now, markets and investors say this is great. But again, if they're not going to cut and interest rates are going to stay up high, I see trouble in the second half of the year. Again, I'm pricing in, believe it or not, a 20% drop in the S&P by year end. So you only got about six, seven months left on that or so. Um, and again, I do think it does does catch up to us in the second half of the year. This is what I, I strive to get this across to investors is that a healthy market has shorts and longs, right? When you get rid of the shorts and selling is occurring from longs, the shorts, when there are allowed to be shorts, they're the ones that are covering their shorts and actually giving the market bounces because again, they're covering, which is forced buying. So they're buying stock to cover their shorts. So it's actually a very healthy thing to have shorts because they'll be covering when something dips, which then causes the bounce in stocks. When you ban it, essentially, if no one can short, it, what you're going to do is have sellers and then who's going to be buying on the other side. It does limit it. And historically, banning short selling has not worked well.